we're going to be looking at moments of a force. A moment of a force gives rise to a turning effect, a rotation about a pivot point. So you have force F, which has a perpendicular distance D from the pivot point. So moment of a force is defined as the force multiplied by the perpendicular distance of forces from the pivot point. So the moment equals F times D. And the units of moment of a force is equal to the units of force, which is newtons, multiplied by the units of distance, which is meter. So the units are newton meter. For this case, what would be the moment of the force F about pivot point O. Well, it's not going to be equal to F times D, and that's because the definition of moment is it's the force multiplied by its perpendicular distance from the pivot point. And in this case, force F and distance D are not perpendicular to each other. So one way in order to determine the moment is to resolve the force into its vertical and horizontal components. And then if we see, it's the vertical component that will produce a moment about the pivot point. So the moment will be given by the vertical component of the force multiplied by distance d. As distance d is the perpendicular distance of the vertical component of the force from the pivot point. The horizontal component of F, FH, does not produce a moment about the pivot point and that's because its line of action is passing through the pivot point so the perpendicular distance of this force from the pivot point is zero, so there's no moment. So whenever the line of action of a force is passing through the pivot point, it will produce no moment. And so resolving the force F to determine the vertical component, well the vertical component is opposite to the angle theta, so we use the sine term. So the vertical component is equal to F sine theta. So the moment of the force about the pivot point will be F sine theta multiplied by the perpendicular distance D. Alternatively, you can find the perpendicular distance that the force is acting along relative to the pivot point. So the perpendicular distance is this, and we can use trigonometry to determine its distance as this line is opposite to the angle, and this length represents distance d, the hypotenuse. So we've got the hypotenuse, angle, and the opposite, so we use the sine term. So this length will represent d sine theta. And so we can say the moment of the force about the pivot point O is given by the force F multiplied by the perpendicular distance, which is d sine theta. A couple is a pair of parallel forces that are equal in size but opposite in direction and that produces rotation. A torque is the moment of a couple. So here you have a pair of parallel forces that are equal in size and opposite in direction, producing an anti-clockwise rotation about the pivot point O. D is the perpendicular distance that separates the forces. So 
d divided by 2 is the distance that each force is from the pivot point. Each force, F, is producing an anti-clockwise moment about the pivot point, O. And the moment will be force F multiplied by the perpendicular distance, the forces from the pivot point, which is D divided by 2. And because both of them are producing an anticlockwise moment, we add both their moments together to get the torque. And so simplifying this becomes the torque equals F times D. And this is the definition of the torque of a couple, which is the magnitude of one of the forces multiplied by the perpendicular distance between the two forces. And the units of the torque will be the same units for moment, which is Newton meter. Centre of gravity is the point which all the weight of an object seems to act. And for a uniform object, so it has a uniform shape and density, its centre of gravity is found at its geometrical centre. So for this case, the weight of the object will be acting at the centre of the object. And objects can be balanced under their centre of gravity. And that's because the weight is passing through the pivot point, so it doesn't produce a moment. For this case, where the car is on two wheels, it's stable because the weight of the car is acting along the pivot point. So it's balanced. However, in this case, the weight of the car is producing a clockwise moment about the pivot point, so the car will topple over. In order to determine the centre of gravity for an object that is not uniform in shape and density, you first need to hang the object freely from one edge and hang a plumb line from that edge to show the vertical. So a plumb line would be a pendulum. And we know the weight of this object will act along the vertical. So you we need to mark out the vertical line from the plumb line. And then you repeat the procedure for another edge of the object to determine another vertical where the weight will be acting along. And so the intersection of the two lines tells us where the centre of gravity is, where the weight of the object appears to act.